It is difficult to prevail against entropy mentally. It is tough to be a stubborn optimist. It is not easy to admit we're all psychic, because some people refuse to admit they are, and try to convince us we are not either. They claim to mean well and want what is best for us, but they do not have better ideas for a future than we can without their help. When people see one person succeeding against a world which has caused the masses to fail, they become jealous. This is why they crucified Jesus and still, to this day, call him the son of the universal God. They killed God's messenger in their own myths. But these are fiction. No book is a better guide for any individual than their own open mind. If you refuse your own natural right to innocence, ESP, foresight, gnosis, clairvoyance of the future, etc., you will not be convinced to return to morality by any book. You will have chosen to be a slave to survivalism, struggle, and war. A slave is someone who refuses to accept their own natural right to freedom. We recognize this economically now in terms of our own species having, all too recently, officially ended the tyranny of human bondage, at least in the form of racial slavery although wage slavery and the underage black market sex slave trades continue to this day. But we, the human species, still lord it over our pet animals, pretending racial supremacy over Middle Easterners is a Western family value and advocate financial debt slavery to the nation of Israel and the multinational bankers' protocols for a new world order. So, many people would rather remain mind slaves to this agenda, claim helplessness to free themselves, and pretend to be immature adult children. The agenda of Pontius Pilate has usurped the rulership in the Church of Christ. All the minds of individual Episcopalians, Southern Baptists, Calvinist Puritans, Lutheran Protestants in general, no less so than Catholics and the Pope himself, have given up to serving a corrupt agenda beyond their control to change. Christendom has become synonymous with the empire of mental slavery. Our species is not more intelligent than any other species of hominid, monkey, ape, mammal, reptile, fish or insect, plant or element. We are worse. We alone have rejected this obvious truth about reality to claim supremacy in any terms we can. Most of the people in power in this world are fools and liars. They are like fearful reptiles, believing they will outlive a nuclear holocaust and regain dinosaurish dominance by carbon-taxing Martian colonists. Complete social control is the rotten fruit on the tree of immortality, eaten by those who have been exiled from Eden. All they know is emulation of jealousy and wrath. Those who preach for war are at war within themselves. They refuse to accept they are telepathic because to them that would mean, and in truth it does, to accept that everyone else hates them. They pretend to be heroes to an audience that exists solely in their own deluded minds, 
then project this delusion onto crowds of real listeners. If such fishing for men happens to catch one or two followers, they are convinced of their now reinforced delusion being an acceptable fact about reality, one that no one, not even a non-existent God, could ever punish them for accepting. This is how, by lying to themselves, fools seek to mislead the blind. When such lying fools are not around, the blind return to their senses and are not impeded against thinking for themselves by the charisma of someone with an amplified microphone or a public address system. They think to themselves and discuss with one another how to overthrow the rule of these lying fools. But as soon as the lying fools reappear again, the blind are reverted to drooling, groundling followers, willing to kill or die for any lost cause. This mindset is very powerful. The delusion that they themselves create around themselves by lying about not being psychic is able to override the willpower of crowds and overwrite their beliefs at a core level in many individuals. Nevertheless, we are all psychic. Each of us as people, all animals, plants, the elements of earth, snowflakes being only the tip of the iceberg, and of the other planets, stars, our galaxy, its core black holes, the entire universe, etc. To know this is imperative. But even though this can be known, it cannot be taught or entirely trapped inside a book. That is why a Kabbalah, call it what you will, it's the esoteric study of transmundane mental uses, is an oral tradition. To take an adult human being who has been raised in the social lies of the Babylon Uber Alice mental construct and teach an old dog a new trick by revealing to them they are mentally free to practice true telepathy is too difficult a task for many to wish to pursue it. The fact we are all psychic means we have free will to change the predetermined future world lines we imagine. It is not easy to admit to oneself, let alone to a hostile audience, especially one comprised of one's own friends and family, that one not only has extra sensory perceptions themselves, but to explain to anyone who does not believe in such that we all do so as well. It is not easy to admit to oneself one is even allowed to suffer from the symptoms of extra sensory perceptions when these symptoms are not called ESP but are called multiple personality disorder, social anxiety disorder, a sleep disorder, chemical manic depression, and or a worse cognitive mental disease. Why is ESP shunned by Western civilization like leprosy? Why is a higher form of mental functioning classified right now as if it were at all alike a contagious viral plague? I will admit that I can hear other voices in my skull besides my own, but this does not mean I suffer from a state of mind that poses any threat to the foundations of civilization itself. There are only a few pathological liars opposite the few who are pathologically honest, and most people are in between, occasional liars. 
those pathological liars who champion the cause of their own personal tyranny in the name of general public safety are not only not supposed to be in charge of civilization, but they actually pose more of a threat to all our survival than to those who are honest and admit we each have our own minds. The modern misdiagnosis of ESP as a form of delusional psychosis dates back to an ancient mistrust between our species and existence as a whole that began at the time of the confusion of the tongues following the Mesopotamian floods some 6,000 to 5,000 years ago or so. We dissociated our species as being the sole self-aware form of life and began to communicate verbally only instead of also mentally or only mentally. We began to distrust the full scope of our natural instincts and that, they say, was when civilization began and when man discovered God, or rather when our species realized knowing you know nothing is the beginning of the fear of God. Some modern biblical revisionary scholars have blamed the use of WMDs for our plight. I do not agree. I believe this choice our ancient ancestors made was a natural part of our evolutionary process, which has since also blossomed forth the entirety of our species presently existent and now known of past civilizations. Instead of continuing to dwell in our innocent and natural condition of telepathy and clairvoyance, our species split itself apart into factions divided against one another by a few leaders who had colluded to agree to do so. The leaders then, and almost all of them since, belonged to the group of pathological liars who renounce as insanity any claims of telepathy as a natural phenomenon even being possible, let alone something we had once and have since sacrificed. Although this truth poses no real threat to anyone, they pretend its revelation would bring an end to their ability to wisely guide us, an activity of civilization for which we have all grown very dependent on them. Granted, the loss of pathological liars as leaders would be a gain for our species' evolution, but we prefer to feed the sacred cows we milk rather than to adopt and or adapt to anything new or different. There is no harm in not wanting to lose their contributions, and there are better alternatives to an armed revolt. There does remain much more to discuss about how telepathy, mind reading, or think talking works. However, instead of learning how to use this tool, the course of our society for several hundred, if not two thousand years at least, has set upon the concept of demonizing the psyche. Why? The psyche, or mind, Jakaida, uses the free will, or ego, Chia, of the spirit, or cosmic mind, Neshima, to animate the soul, or EM energy aura, Ruach, which in turn causes neural life to occur in the biological body, nefesh. The Egyptians identified the aura, or ruach, as the ka, and specified within this the seven bay of re, bay being plural for ba, and re being 
Heru Ra Aten, the solar deity, correspondent to the seven chakras, nerve centers called plexuses and ganglias, along the spine and brain stem. The Ka literally meant energy shadow or shadow self, while the Bay of Ray were portrayed as horses drawing the solar chariot across the sky. To a modern student of these topics, it should be clear the seven chakra nerve centers of the brainstem form in the fetus and develop in adults of our species as a result of an effective morphogenetic field comprised of a patterned template that apparently pre-exists the formation of biological cells in the form of an EM energy field. For our species, we have seven chakra nerve centers in our spines and brain stems as a result of this toroidal EM field collapsing in on itself at its core into a seven twisted spiral. Other species have other forms of this same essentially toroidal field. Our species has seven due to the toroidal EM field surrounding us each resembling a form of Jacob's Ladder between twin poles inside the toroid's collapsed center, one flowing up, the other down. These dipolar currents pulsing up and down our spine and brainstem form seven intersections between ten points, five opposite five. The five sephirot per polarity of such a Jacob's ladder, alike the tree of life diagram of Hakabalah, would be the equivalent of the five fingers of a five-dimensional omni-minds projected hands and these would hold the seven intersections between their sparks like puppet strings which would, in turn, connect through the fourth dimension to our three-dimensional central nervous systems, causing the formation of the seven chakras of the morphogenetic aura patterning out the formation of our cellular development. So, if the seven chakra nerve centers of the biological nervous systems of our human species result from seven predetermined energy aura intersections in an EM field lattice pattern, alike sparks rising and descending between the twin poles of a Jacob's ladder, and this twisted spiral simply the collapsing core of our toroidal EM aura or soul. The question remains, how do these conceptualized entities communicate directly only mentally? Here enters the concept that each of our surrounding toroidal auras reflects on its exterior a distorted image of the nearby other energy patterns in our surrounding environment, including the elements, plants, animals, and other people. The exterior reflection of the egos of other people surrounding us, as with oil on the surface of water, and the interior perception of our eggshell, soul, or aura, as karmic units for us to apply choices to, are usually very different, and this causes the surface of our womb-like soul or aura to remain opaque and vague. When we see through all our choices from a point of view outside our situation, alike from the perspective of a stranger, we clear our auras and they become more invisible and transparent. Now, just as the distortions to perfect reflections of other people's scalar overlapping of personal EM fields, souls, what have you, occur on the exterior surface of our aura, so too are there a fixed number of karmic 
pixel like units comprising the interior surface of our surrounding aura, the immortal soul, etc. These correlate to one another such that our choices distort how others see themselves reflected in our auras and how others react to us effectively constricts or expands our sum of self-benefiting karmic choices. Just as the seven chakras of our nervous system arise due to the interior interactions of our personal EM energy field or aura, so too is the surrounding aura soft and porous, co-created by one's self and others, but it can also serve to act as a permeable membrane for similar sparks or cross-carried interpersonally transmitted karmic units of choice in the form of thoughts. The inner morphogenetic field and the surrounding aura are electromagnetic. Thoughts, ideas, and emotions can permeate this field by traveling on a medium faster and smaller than the substance of the EM field of overlapping auras, i.e. tachyons. The seven chakras along the spine and brainstem are often likened to stages of development from invertebrates toward sentience. This analogy is inaccurate, misleading, and wrong. Likewise, the aura or soul is seen as being the medium by which telepathic communion can occur between minds. This, too, is false misinformation. In humans, all seven chakras are equally active and equally important at all times, albeit most function at only 10% of full capacity for neural activity provided by the amount of cellular circuits in the CNS. So it is false to see them as a progress from a more primitive to more socialized form. Likewise, it is not EM sparks that jump between people's surrounding EM fields that allow one person's mind to read another's, or for two people to think talk back and forth, to sing a song in silence, to paraphrase Trismegistus Mazda to Asclepius Zoroaster. The medium of tachyons occurring inside the nervous system precede and cause the chemical cascades that occur simultaneous to the brain having a thought. Likewise, tachyons can travel outside one's own nervous system just as easily and faster than photoelectric light, and enter into another person's mind. This is the medium by which telepathy can occur. Now, the method of how to broadcast one's own thoughts into another person's brains, of how to remain open to their reactions and to intuitively deduce their innermost, even secret, motives, is based on understanding how to, using the mind's five-dimensional invisible hands, form small patterns or lattice shapes comprised of tachyonic energy and by projecting them onto others using the creative visualization of the mind's eye. How to move these small thought forms about in space and, as we shall discuss next, also time. To accomplish this requires no practice, but to control it and to use it to one's own intended ends or to any benefit does. Think of each thought you wish to project into another person's mind as a small snowflake-like lattice shape, a pattern of invisible energy, and then naturally and simply apply this visual symbol into another person's skull and brains then they will think that thought 
You can manipulate people this way. It can also be used in two-way telepathic, mind-to-mind -mind only, communion. To deal with the concept of our aura's gradual expansion and disillusion over cosmic scales of time, it is best to examine how each of these thought forms we project outward from us serves as a form of intellectual offspring that divides and parts from to wander out and away from but to remain connected to our original auric field inhabited by our free spirits or ego minds as more and more such thought form karmic choice pixel particles evaporate entropically away from our core biological body our soul expands and by this process will eventually dissolve into oneness with the eternal omniversal spirit mind sentient or not to deal with the concept of how each of our own original thought forms gradually evolves into its own self-sentience over cosmic time scales, we are beginning to deal with how the omni-mind of the pure tachyonic nulliverse gradually becomes more self-sentient from the inside out. Using the intergalactic filaments like our own biological neuron cells. Now, in dealing with how to remain in contact with now distant, once close, karmic energy particles and long ago projected tachyon thought forms, one begins to deal across vast distances of space and cosmic scales of time on the material levels of the immortal, universal soul. This means time travel, the division of the central timeline's self from their prior temporarily locked world line and the entire complex T4 paradigm of killing off all other selves in parallel dimensional alternate realities. In normal conditions, without dealing on the cosmic duration scales that imply time travel, the soul experiences these other selves as the reflections of other individual auras on the exterior surface of their own aura, and we experience their influencing of our aura's interior as the limiting of our beneficial karmic choice units. However, insofar as there is only one God, likewise there is only one mind inhabiting all bodies throughout all time simultaneously, animating their biological cellular evolution as well as their energy field patterns. As this one mind comes closer to realizing it exists behind and within the minds of all other people, animals, plants, elements, etc. of our universe, our multiverse, our nulliverse, etc., then the omni-mind awakens to fully conscious self-sentience. The result of the T4 paradigm, destroying the thought forms that arise at the intersections between our personal auras, i.e., killing all our own shadow selves in all the surrounding possible directions for choice unit divisions into other possible world lines, is synonymous with clearing the aura's EM field and elevating one's mental energy level of awareness to the furthest reaches of tachyons beyond the nulliverse. When there are no thought forms or energy doubles existing to transport our individual mind's ego will onto the brains of other beings. There is nothing restraining one's mind 
from expanding to redissolve into oneness with the omni mind of the one true most high God. <laughs>